okay hello youtube welcome welcome back to my channel um, i'm super excited to bring you another timeline tuesday where i go super in depth about my timeline how i edited certain videos and kind of give you guys a recipe to create cool creative videos similar to the ones that i do so i'm excited about today um, a lot of people wanted me to do a in-depth tutorial on this particular video it's a behind the scenes video with storm reed um and you know my friend asked me to come shoot this video i have a lot of pictures in there because he's a photographer so we wanted to implement photos and so you guys will be able to see kind of how i was able to implement the photos and have it go seamless along with the video so um without further ado we're gonna get started this is just a it's actually a super easy uh edit i didn't do too much but it shows that it's a lot that was done but it really wasn't but uh, yeah, we're just gonna get right into it. So basically, I found a song off YouTube and I wanted to already, I knew off tops that I wanted to go with like a, a vintage vibe for a Storm. And so I already knew the look that I wanted when I started shooting it. I knew I was gonna use my Super 8 mats. I knew certain aspects of the video before I even started editing it, which is always a good idea to know how you want a video to be because it helps prepare you in the shooting phase. Um, and so basically you see the first thing is the mat. Um, without a mat, it's just a 1920 by 1080. Um, but then I added the mat on there and you'll see the mat throughout the video. I go back and forth from using the mat to not using the mat. But, um, basically if you check out my older video, the video I did like last week where, or the two weeks before where I talked about where I get certain effects in the top four effects that I like to use, I'll have the link above. You can check it out. But, um, I talked about this mat and where I got it and, you know, things like that. And so what I did in order to show, because if you see the mat, this is how it originally looks. So what I did to kind of show my footage underneath is I went to my effects control and I just hit multiply, um, because um, screen didn't work and lighting didn't work so you want to hit multiply so you can actually see the footage underneath it um, my adjustment layer is my color so you'll see that I use the Jacob Owens LUT on all of them so it kind of adds like this super vintage vibe um, so the first effect that you will see is this offset effect I also talk about this in my video, but I manually did this offset effect. There's other ways to do it. You can use the motion array film roll, um, but I did this manually. And so I cut off a couple of frames at the end of this clip so that it can transition to the next clip. And so the way I did that is I went to effects, I typed in offset, I dragged it over, which you'll see right here. And then I started at the originals 960 by 540. That's where it starts. And I knew by the end, I kind of wanted to kind of just keep it going um, to make it look like it's gonna channel over to So yeah, kind of just basically film rolls into the next shot, which is the makeup brushes. And for the next effect, and also I did add a sound effect to make it sound more dramatic and kind of, you know, allow it to go with that effect. Um, so I got the whoosh effect and I got that uh, from YouTube. Uh, the next effect I used, just the film burns. And I, like, again, I talk about this in my last video where I got these, but I just put a screen on them. Normally it's kind of like that. I just added a screen on them so you can see the uh, footage more clearly underneath it so that it won't be as plain cutting to the next clip. So when you see it, it just kind of does something super simple and just kind of transitions to the next clip, which is the close. Um, and I use the outline uh, text for this, which is uh, Helvetica Canoe. And I just basically use the stroke. I put the stroke on two, uh, two. So in order to outline your text, because normally it would be on fill, but in order to kind of do something different and outline your text in Premiere, you take off fill and you hit outline. And you can basically make this as big as you want. I felt like two was kind of the perfect, um, the perfect amount. But that's basically how you outline your text. Most texts that come in bold, you're able to outline them. So that's definitely an easy, quick little tutorial on outlining your text in Premiere. Um, this shot, what I did was I basically duplicated my clip and I added a black and white. So that's how you see this 
black and white effect just to just to do something quick it's not a lot but you know just to make it kind of cool it's about fashion so just kind of like playing around with it and so what I did was I cropped it so originally when I added the black and white it made the whole clip black and white but I cropped it so that it will only be like a strip of black and white and then you will kind of see the color from the same uh, footage underneath it so not too much but just a little hint of something to make it look you know cool um, this shot I didn't do much on it um, I didn't do much on it I shot a lot of these shots in um, slow motion so it was 19 20 by 1080 and 60 frames per second um, and all this has the Jacob Owens uh, LUT on it so now you'll see us getting into the photos and so I wanted to make I wanted to add a cool way to get into the photos and so what I did was um, the background the story looks you guys probably might notice this but I actually took it from the app that you use on your phone when you're creating your insta stories and what i did was i took a picture picture of it and i uploaded it to my um computer and basically i just scaled i took off uniform scale and i scaled my photo to make it seem as if it was a frame for the photo but the story looks itself really came from the app that you use for instagram so just trying to get creative with that um, I know Jacob Owens also has some of these where you don't have to do everything that I did, but um, that's, I just kind of liked how these looked, and so that's kind of where I took it from. Um, there's easier ways to do this, of course, but again, I just uniformed it, and as you can see, it scales up as we get closer to the end of them to go back into the 1920 by 1080 so. And when you hear it, you hear that 35 millimeter projector start. I think I want to say I got that from Epidemic Sounds. If not, I got it from YouTube. But it just adds a little spice into the effect of the photos. It gives you like that film projector effect as the photos are, you know, going, uh, getting bigger and scaling bigger. So yeah, and then I cut and we're back at that Super 8. You see the Super 8 um, effect. That was just a quick cross dissolve into the next shot. Um, and then I go and I did the film burn a lot more subtle than the first one. And for this, as you see, I added the blank VHS tape. I really found this on YouTube. Um, it actually looks like this. And what I did was I just scaled it up to fit the 1920 by 1080, which is 161. And I put it over my two clips to kind of make it look vintage. And for this particular clip, I basically did a crop. And as you can see, um, it starts off at 33 and 35 on each side. And as it gets to the end of the clip, I lose the crop so the clip starts to get more wide but you still see that VHS tape effect on top of it so you see the number zero one um, and the same thing for this one it kind of goes into that VH1 vintage vibe and then just like a little flash um, just kind of show you like this you know super effect that kind of goes into that before we cut back to more photos which again is the same thing I did with the first ones I added the story looks but you know some of these were vertical so I basically just turned it around um, and let it kind of use it as a frame to you know for the photos all this still has that uh, color corrected uh, vintage vibe with it with this, I used the mat again. All I did was I basically cropped um, each one and uh, kind of did something with the beat. So the first one you see, I just basically flip this one and you just go to effects, flip, and you'll see your horizontal flipped. So I flipped the side and I also added um, the crop. So that way as the beat, you see this cut right here so as the beat changes, or you see that beat breakdown, it changes to a different shot of her. So, so you heard a beat. And so it makes it kind of like look dope because of I'm cutting to the beat. So then we go to this Y shot. Um, and all I did with this is I scaled the first one up, next one. I went uh, to the full one, like which is just 100. I scaled this up just a little bit to give like a quick effect. So you see it goes from like super close in to wide. Um, and again, guys, I'm showing you this. It doesn't look clear because I'm on a fourth. Um, just trying to preserve the 
you know, make it go fast and not slow down the computer. Um, but then I just kind of like added a, I duplicated the clip, put a screen on it. And that's how you get this like ghost effect. So all of it goes to the beat, you know, then it comes back to her. Then it goes really fast to the next clip. So, and then with this shot, all I did, which was really cool, I wanted to do something different. So I have the two clips on top of each other. Um, this clip is originally from this one and it spills over to go on top of the uh, C0060 clip. And so, so I did a mask, as you can see. And, uh, I don't know what happened to my color. But yeah, I did a mask and so yeah, that was all I did for that. Um, for this one, I added that film burn and in order to get this little rotated effect, I used my Ronin S. I shot this on a Ronin S. A lot of these shots are on a Ronin S to give like a fluid smoothness to it. Um, and so I kind of did that right out the camera and add that film burn effect. And then it comes back, it reverses back. Man, these are just super simple shots. Again, film burn, cutting to different shots. So again, super easy edit, honestly. It just looks intriguing, but it's super easy edit. Uh, this, I use the offset as well. Again, I have my mat on top. I scale my offset over so you see this line. And then uh, you still see, I put this at 61 for opacity, so you still kind of see the shot underneath. Just to kind of give it a cool little effect. Um, and I shot this to go behind Eric, which is the photographer, and then I crossed this off so that it comes and she has a completely different outfit on. So she starts off with her sports outfit on, and then it goes behind him and it comes out with a more business outfit on. Those are the things that you want to look for when you're shooting. Uh, how you can, you know, create transitions when you're shooting to be able to use in the edit. I already, sh I knew that I wanted to do a shot like this while shooting it, and then it just worked well with the edit. And then this, I basically brought the opacity down so you still see that shot underneath, but then a closer shot of her in that same outfit. With this shot, I used the film burn, but I also did the same thing. I used a mask for each shot. Um, and just mask it out so it was kind of together. So the shoes, the face, the clothes, um, to show all of it. And then again, we go to those photos. I also use the color mat, a white color mat underneath it. And that's why it's white. Otherwise, if I didn't, it would be black and you would see the white from me <laughs> taking that. So yeah, I use white. flash again check out my last video or my video where I talked about where I get my film effects and stuff like that from it's a really good video and all these effects honestly are in that video so you can check it out and you can go and download them uh, the film burns this flash effect the mat um, they're free the mat is like the mat effect was like three dollars so um, for this one I went back to that uh, VH1 effect got my pictures again and this one I did a video on this as well, where I show you how to do clip layered effect. And so you have the wide and then it cuts to a different clip, which is a little smaller in scale. And then the next clip, which is smaller than that one in scale. So, and it goes to the beat. So boom, boom, hit. So that's, you know, I always like to use that. And then this, I just basically flipped it and made it black and white. Uh, this I added my uh, mat again. All these mats kind of came together in that $3 bundle that I purchased. Guys, $3, yes. So make sure you get that. That was uh, just that, add that little film effect of her getting ready. This is the same, I flipped it. And then the top one, I lightened it and I put it at 26. So that way you can still see it, but not as noticeably as the top. This is the same thing I did for the first one. I just made it go faster as it goes behind them.
and then most of these cuts really are just cutting on beat so it, it's it, when you watch it all together with the song it looks really dope sounds really dope everything about it just works but that's because i like to cut on beat when people don't cut on beat for videos like this it just it looks off beat one but it just doesn't look as clean and crisp and creative as it can uh, because it seems like you're missing the beat so videos like this um, you definitely want to sometimes cut on beat or majority of the time cut on beat it heighten up your cuts it heighten up the clips and when you add sound effects on certain transitions um, that heightens it as well so all my uh, photos have that 35 millimeter projector sound effect and then that fast moving whoosh sound effect so I could have added more sound effects if I wanted to but that wasn't that kind of video so uh, we're near the end this one I kind of shot it like this again a lot of this is how I shot it before I even brought it to the edit so as long as you shoot it great then the edit is always going to be great if you don't shoot it creatively then you can't you can you can make the edit creative but when you add that spice and shooting it creatively then you have like such a dope edit don't always rely on the edit to make such a creative and dope video rely on the shooting and how well you can continue to test yourself with shots that you can create while you're on set so then we have that flash again that white takes us and that crosses off takes us to that empty shot of just the set we cross this off to his logo and then i kind of just add just the regular title i didn't do much to it just a, a minion pro feel um, to the end and it cross dissolves out and honestly that is the whole video so not a lot again um you have to look at every video different feel the vibe for each video this vibe is a lot different than kalana's videos which may be a lot different than a different bts video that i might do that may be way more fast paced and the music is more fast paced but she was chill we were all chill it was a very cool and chill day so when you try to make behind the scenes videos you want to make sure that you're giving off you're allowing the people who watch it to feel as if they were there so when people watch this they feel like man that looks like it was just a chill fun creative day and that's the vibe that i wanted to give people there you have it guys super easy literally in my last video where i talk about the four effects that i like to use Honestly, all I did was use those four effects in this video. I just, you know, stretched it out and found the best ways to use them. So make sure you check that video out. I hope you guys like this video. I know it was a lot shorter than normal uh, when I do these, but because this was a pretty simple video, it just, look at it, it just looks a lot more intricate, but it's not, I promise you. Um, when you look at it, it looks intimidating, but as you go throughout these in-depth videos that I'm giving you guys, you start to realize a lot of times I reuse a lot of effects, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I continue to test myself more in my shooting ability than my uh, editing ability, um, but I do it in both. I'm always trying to learn how to make different effects, how to you know, play around with effects given to me as well as search for effects. And so that's all you need to do as a creative and continue to grow in your craft. I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, I know it wasn't as super, super uh, in depth because I didn't do much with it, but hopefully you learned something on um, how to utilize photos in your videos. There's a lot of ways, but just, yeah, keep being creative. Hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Share this with your friends who want to be editors, or if you're trying to edit more, if you know people who want to get more into editing, share this with your friends. And if you are not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Um, watch some of my past videos where I do go in depth on super intricate videos um, and I will promise to continue to keep these videos going thank you guys for checking out my timeline Tuesday and I'll see you guys soon